Uh, all right, yeah, I'm uh, Jason, Jason Haddix, and this is JP Spagnito. And today we're going to talk about uh, a tool that we created, uh, an extension for Burp Suite, really two tools, uh, called Hunt. Um, so we weren't the only ones who did this. Uh, our security operations group, uh, Fatih and Ryan and Vishal also helped us with, uh, with some of the data polling and everything like that. Mostly, we work for Bug Crowd that runs crowdsource pen tests and assessments and responsible disclosure. Uh, but all of us are bug hunters and pen tests and code analysis people. Uh, and we're also really big fans of Burp Suite. So um, we spend most of our time hacking web apps inside of Burp Suite all day. Um, and so we wanted to create these two tools to kind of extend us and uh, kind of the knowledge to people who are either new in application security assessment or looking for a different type of coverage in application security assessment. So the three problems that we're trying to identify with the two tools that we made. So, uh, so in applications are getting completely large, lots of parameters, um, and you don't know really where to start. If you have a large domain, uh, that maybe has like, you know, 150 dynamic parameters where you're supposed to fuzz with, uh, you know, different fuzz strings. It can get unwieldy, um, and you don't want to rely all the way on something like a scanner, right? Uh, they don't have full coverage. They're just fuzzing things until they crap over or something like that. So we wanted something to alert us when, uh, there are potential issues, and specifically, uh, parameters that might be vulnerable to certain classes of vulnerabilities. But it's for manual testing. It's not for automated testing. Uh, we also noticed that there is this lack of tribal knowledge um, for younger testers, right? So, you know, JP may have been doing this for 10 years and knows that um, just by the name of a parameter, it probably interacts with a database or a templating engine or something like that. Um, and he knows to fuzz for certain vulnerabilities in that place. Uh, but me, if I were a new tester, um, I wouldn't know to look there unless I had his expertise. Um, so we wanted to kind of level up uh, the testers, you know, who were at that skill level and transfer that tribal knowledge. And then we also notice that there's no in-tool workflow for web hacking methodologies inside of Burp, right? If you do web hacking and you want to record a large amount of data, you have to do it in a third-party tool. Uh, you can do it in Burp Notes, but uh, it's kind of unwieldy. Um, there just wasn't something that fit kind of what we were looking for inside of, uh, inside of Burp. So the current kind of solutions for, uh, to effectively find security bugs in web applications is, you know, you have a badass hacker who can kind of eyeball parameters that uh, or input places that, you know, where are vulnerable. So um, they can find security bugs. They may or may not use a methodology. Uh, they definitely have accrued some tribal knowledge of vulnerabilities. Um, and you can do this as a bug hunter or a consultant or something like that. There's also the solution of a dynamic scanner, which just throws limited test cases at parameters, hoping that either an error occurs or a, a response occurs that it parses and recognizes that there's a vulnerability there. Um, but those are cost prohibitive because a lot of those good scanners cost a lot of money. Uh, they're limited in their detection cases. Um, they don't handle dynamic pages very well. They don't handle non-generic errors very well. And they don't handle authentication very well in most cases. So um, we wanted to be able to give people a way to manually test but know where to manually test uh, and, and have some data behind it. So we built this into uh, Hunt. So it's a tribal knowledge passive alerts. You get alerts when it sees parameters that are most often vulnerable to certain things. Uh, you get methodology inside of Burp. And you also get a whole bunch of references that we added. So um, the Burp uh, advisories are really their write-ups on the vulnerabilities. Um, but the best methods and the best stuff usually come from blogs, like the cheat sheets that like Pentest Monkey has and, you know, for SQL injection and stuff like that. Um, or just, you know, members of the community, uh, we found that we weren't using, you know, uh, certain references inside the tool. We wanted to bring them inside the tool so that when you're training up a new application assessment person, they have all those links and resources right inside the tool and they can get, you know, started as fast as they can, you know, manually testing some of these vulnerability classes. Okay, so the first tool is Scanner, Hunt Scanner. So before we launch into what it looks like, you have to know kind of how we gather the data to make the alerts. Um, so we, we are bug crowd. We do a lot of um, bug bounties, over 600 run right now. Um, and so basically this is just some fuzzy math, but uh, programs that we have, if you times those by two targets, we average two targets per application. Um, and these are usually targets are either subdomains or fully qualified top level domains. So like www.defcon.org, forums.defcon.org, anything that really uh, gives you different application functionality is going to be a target. And then we averaged about every one of those places had about 15 dynamic parameters, unique dynamic parameters per application. Um, 
So about 18,000 parameters seen over the kind of data set that we were looking at. Um, so what we did with the 18,000 parameters is we reduced them to parameters with vulns on them, um, which was mostly all of them, but then we reduced it again to things that had P1 and P2 vulnerabilities on them, which are high and um, critical level vulnerabilities. These are things that let you read the file system, they let you um, execute arbitrary code, they are a configuration vulnerability that allows you to see credit cards of other people. These are those type of bugs. Uh, so we reduced it to those bugs, and then we started sorting it for reoccurring instances, and this is really, you know, fuzzy data science, uh, but it, it works. Um, so then we include the top five to ten reoccurring instances of parameters to start alerting you when they fall through your burp traffic. Um, and then we actually review the top hundred possible permutations with some of these, um, and then we manually added some, like, ancillary data, so the FuzzDB project, Seclis, and just some parameters that our buddies who worked at pen test consultancies were like, I see this all the time with this vuln. Um, so we added some stuff to this data set as well. So just, you know, a quick refresher for, you know, what we're talking about here. Uh, this is an example of a parameter in orange here, right? So this is where uh, after the equal sign you're going to fuzz for, in this case, probably SQL injection. The ID parameter uh, most often is associated with the database. So um, this is kind of what this talk is about. Is, is getting to this, right? When you see ID equals one, you put in ticks, right? So um, this is the essence of scanner. All right, so this is what uh, scanner looks like. So this is uh, a totally separate tab. We didn't want to pollute your already uh, made burp instance. We didn't want to pollute the uh, advisories of uh, burp scanner or anything like that. So we made a completely different tab. Um, and we started with uh, I think seven or eight classes of vulnerabilities that were P1 worthy. Um, so here you can see on the left hand side, uh, we've funneled some traffic through Burp, and it's already starting to alert us on common parameters that are vulnerable to server side request forgery on the left. Um, so here you can see the requests end up inside of a sub tree on the left. Um, you can see the kind of parameters we're talking about here, destination, dir, URI, path, continue, et cetera, et cetera, right? These are all things that you're going to want to fuzz for server side request forgery, uh, probably URL redirection, things like that. Um, so you'll have the request and the response, and you'll also have an advisory that we'll go over in a second. So here's the advisory. Um, you can see here that uh, we added just some general stuff, but this is all customizable. You'll be able to customize itself with your own built-in methodologies inside of Burp. Um, it's very editable. So if you have a team and you have a resource list or a cheat sheet of some sort to do these things, you can add them now inside of Burp in your own advisories. So you have the location. And then for this one, obviously the SSRF Bible for this class of vulnerability is probably one of the best resources you can look at for SSRF. And there's a couple of other resources that we think are worthy um, to manually test vulnerabilities against a class of vulnerability like this. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about the data that showed up when we parsed all of that stuff. So this is a sampling of the SQL injection data that, that we pulled out, right? And so if you look at this table, these are all the parameters that normally had critical SQL injection on them. So if you take nothing else from this talk, if you hate the extension, you probably use the data in some way in your testing. Um, so ID, update, sort, process, what you'll notice when you start reading these things is they're all related to database stuff. A new tester might not know that some of these things uh, are related to databases, and they might not know to test there. Um, custom headers showed up time and time again. Uh, JSON and XML web services, we can alert on types. Uh, but really, we're, we're mostly alerting on regexes of, uh, of certain parameter names here. So column, code, field, et cetera. So this is the data for uh, file traversal and directory traversal. So um, things like file, folder, root, style, load, location. Um, this is where you're going to try to uh, change paths or include files that aren't yours or uh, cause some kind of error in that way or vulnerability. Uh, this was actually out of the bug crowd data this year. This was the highest uh, critical vulnerability that we found uh, over and over again. So server-side request forgery that allowed local file reads. Um, so this is this parameter set, and we also found that it crossed over a lot with the file includes in the directory traversal parameters, um, so we actually alert on both data sets for, for this bug. A lot of money has been made off of SRF this year. Uh, OS command injection, a smaller list, uh, but things like daemon, execute, upload, download, dir, log, things that are related to command line um, stuff on Linux usually. Insecure direct object reference, things that are related to kind of um, 
the, uh, the state of a user traversing an application, ID, account, order, doc, email, et cetera. And then this is server-side template injection and uh, debug parameters. Um, and I didn't make a nice table for the right-hand one. So uh, server-side template injection, uh, obviously template, preview, ID, view, name. Uh, I would verify with this bug that you're actually targeting a template injection or a template engine before you fuzz for these, but still useful to have. Uh, and then the right-hand side there, the JSON schema is actually what this looks like, and I'll show it in a sec second how you go ahead and edit and add your own parameters. Um, but uh, that's the list for debug parameters that indicate um, things like logic vulnerabilities or special admin parameters that let you do special functions and things like, things like that. So access, admin, debug, edit, grant, test, alter, clone, et cetera. So these are all language things that relate to vulnerabilities. So the implementation of the burp suite kind of um, API we used is iScanner check and iScanner issue. It makes a new tab. Um, if you want to edit or make a second tab for alerts or anything like this, it's, it's really just like one block of code. We provided that uh, pretty easily editable here. If you've ever made a burp extension, it's in Python, so easily extendable. And then we'll do a quick demo. All right, so uh, here we have Tesla.com, which is a bug crowd customer, and they have a bounty. Um, and so I've hooked them up to burp. And on the left-hand side, traffic has started flowing from tesla.com through Burp. Um, so the first thing that you want to do with this is make sure to set your scope, but I've already done that. And you can see here on the left-hand side, traffic has already started to go through, especially for tesla.com, which is what's going through right now. Um, now if I go to Hunt Scanner up here in the right, and I collapse these, you can see that it's already started to tell me that there's some places I should look manually for these vulnerabilities. Um, so here I can see um, things associated to SQL injection, things asso associated to debug and logic, server-side request forgery, et cetera. So we'll go here. Um, and you can click here. Now you get uh, this instance. So uh, this domain had uh, the page parameter on it. You can see the advisory for server-side template injection, the request here, the response here. And then let's say you check this manually and it's not vulnerable to anything. You can actually remove it from the list by just checking it off and clicking up here. Um, so uh, it allows you to remove the stuff that you know, you've already tested. So that's just a quick overview of, of Hunt Scanner and how Hunt Scanner works. Let me back to slides. All right, so the next tool is the GUI and the methodology part of it. All right, <clears throat> so we're talking about the GUI methodology, so I'm sure a lot of you guys are, you know, pen testers, vulnerability assessors, and, you know, when you're doing your testing, you're actually going to be doing, you know, going by a methodology. Unless you're some kind of, you know, YOLO swag god hacker, you're gonna be going by a methodology. And you'll be using things like, you know, the OWASP testing guide, the Web Application Hacker's Handbook, or you might even go by uh, standards like HIPAA or PCI. So um, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about methodologies. Um, for those of you who aren't uh, professional pen testers or vulnerability assessors, uh, why, why would you want to use a methodology? Because this is what you would need to prove that you did the work. So kind of like in you know, second grade math, they want you to show the work, this is how you would do it, and we actually put that into uh, Burp Suite so that it's easy to get you know, your request and response pairs uh, within there, and then when you're gonna generate your report, it's already in there, so you don't have to go through the hassle of copy and pasting and all that nonsense, right? So the first thing uh, that we're gonna talk about here in, in terms of the GUI is that you can have a, there's a right click send to methodology section. So from anywhere in Burp where you have a request, request and response pair, you can actually just do a right click and you can see uh, there's, a, there's a line there that says send to uh, hunt methodology and then it has the subfolders and folders where you can actually put uh, that particular uh, request and response pair after you've actually done your testing to show that you've um, done the work and prove that you know there is a vulnerability there or you know if you have your POC in there that's where you would put it. So this is what it looks like in Burp as far as the uh, methodology window. So you notice a few things here. 
um, on the left hand bar, you'll see that there's a, there's a file tree there. So essentially it's the methodology that you're gonna be using and then we break it down by functionality. And um, for this one, this is the actual default um, kind of JSON file that we have included within Hunt and it breaks it down by um, areas of the application that you generally are testing for vulnerabilities. Things like the account, the account registration, money transactions, authentication, search, contact us. Those are usually the places where you're gonna be testing for vulnerabilities and where you'll definitely find vulnerabilities of certain types. So for example, uh, on the account page, you're gonna be testing things like IDOR or uh, cross-site request forgery, authentication bypasses, stuff like that. So this is how I have it laid out. But if you have your own methodology, you can also just um, do it yourself and it's a simple JSON file uh, and we'll get to that in a second. And you can you know, put in your own methodology. Everyone has a different methodology that they follow. But the important thing here is that we wanted to make it easy for the pen tester to be able to actually put that methodology in, uh, in Burp so that they're um, going through it and they're efficient at doing their work. Um, so here you can see that there's a description. So um, not just for the seasoned pen tester, but again, we wanted to address that, that tribal knowledge um, aspect. So if you have newer members on your team who aren't um, seasoned or you know, aren't uh, used to doing web hacking, um, for particular testing here, so let, let's say you know, for authentication bypass, I don't know, I don't know what the hell that means. Um, I would see here on description that, okay, I would do this, this check for this particular type of vulnerability. The next tab here is called bugs. So um, we do multiple request and response tracking. So you might have uh, multiple uh, requests and responses for a particular vulnerability and they might be um, different uh, attack vectors. So you can keep track of all of that here. And then uh, when you go generate your report, Boom, you already have um, all of your work in there, no copy and pasting, that's disgusting. Um, next thing here, uh, the resources. So again, just like on the uh, scanner window, uh, we're gonna have the resources for you. So again, you could put all of the resources here, SQL injection, for example, you're gonna, do, you're gonna use like Pentest Monkey, stuff like that, or you might even put in um, you know, how to use SQL map on there, stuff like that. And then the notes section. So we also have a notes section here. So you know, when, you, when you're doing your work, you might you might go off and you know start doing SQL injection. You're not you're not finding it, or you know you have the error, but you can't get uh, a proper POC for it. Um, and you want to you want to work on it later. So uh, you can leave notes for yourself. You know, try to break it manually. Uh, if I can't do that, then use SQL Map. And then if all else fails, I'll send it to Bob or I'll send it to Jason because I suck at SQL SQL injection. So. The next thing here is that uh, with the notes, um, you can send your actual uh, JSON file to other people and then they can load it up in, in, their, in their burp instance or you can even, uh, you know, you could save it and then have it for your report. So um, just like in that instance with notes, if, you know, I want Jason, for example, to check my work for my methodology, it's like my first week on the job and I want to make sure that I'm doing it right, he can go ahead and look at it in his own instance in Burp and it'll, it'll have all of the requests and responses uh, and he can do, he can check that. If, you know, I need help with SQL injection from someone on my team who uh, is much better at, at SQL injection than I am, they can go ahead and do that, get the POC and then send it back to me and then I can keep doing my work. And this is the um, implementation uh, within within Burp itself, so we used I extension state listener, I context um, menu factory, and I tab, and then that makes the Burp tab uh, hunt methodology. So, um, if you were to edit this and then um, you know add your own stuff here, uh, all you need to do is open up the code and then uh, go into the create menus function and then mess around there. And then we'll do a live demo. So let's say, you know, so we're using uh, the hunt scanner and the hunt methodology in conjunction, right? So uh, let's say I send one of these to repeater. So you can actually, um, you know, send all of these requests and responses from scanner to things like repeater and intruder, and then you can continue your work there. 
So let's say I send it to repeater, and I have one set up here. So I do, I do my hacking on here, I do my manual uh, test, and then I find that it is uh, vulnerable. Let's see, this one. Um, and you know, it's there. I want to send it to my methodology now because I'm done, and I want to prove my work. So um, right click here, send to hunt methodology. Let's say I was testing for IDOR, I'll put it right here. When I go into the methodology, I'll go into functionality and account, and then it's in it's within the bug. So I, I can also you know just close it if um, I don't want I don't want it in there. So that's the uh, typical workflow for um, getting stuff in scanner and then doing the testing in repeater and intruder, sending that all into uh, the hunt methodology. Now let's talk about the actual plugin installation. So um, as we were talking about before, this is this plugin lives within Burp Suite. So kind of the installation is that, uh, you know, we're using Jython. So the actual uh, code is written in Python and then we use Jython to be able to use it within Burp because it's, it's using the JVM. So what you would do is here in this uh, Python environment, uh, you would go on the Jython website, uh, get the latest standalone jar and you would actually put it in here so that when uh, Burp loads up the uh, plugin, it'll, it'll go in there. Next is the actual installation of the plugin itself. So you would go into the extender tab and you would add it as a Burp extension. Uh, you'll notice here that there's an extension type. I set it to Python and then I set it to the actual extension itself. So then uh, wherever that's living, select it and then you're off and ready to go. But more of the setup of actually using um, Hunt. So uh, those of you who have used uh, Burp a lot know that um, the passive scanner can be uh, pretty noisy. So depending on how you have your scope set up, you definitely want to do that. So you can see here, um, like with the example Jason gave earlier with Tesla, you would add the, in the target window, add scope, add Tesla here and it will only get Tesla um, host names uh, that match. After that, you would go into scanner and then you would uh, select uh, use suite scope on the live passive scanning. So the, the scanner actually uses the passive scanner, but none of that information will show up on, on the actual passive scanner window. It'll be in within hunt. And uh, kind of the effective way that we, we've seen uh, this use and how we use it ourselves is that within the target window itself, you would go in there, um, click, uh, actually spider all of those items so you can get a lot of coverage for all the things that you need to test. And once that's all done, click passively scan selected items and all of that will end up in the, um, the scanner window. Cool. So another thing that we wanted to make sure uh, was that it was easily extensible. So. Um, so both uh, methodology and um, scanner uh, can easily be extended to accommodate something like a new CVE that comes out tomorrow, maybe Burp doesn't have a check for, or a specific vulnerability um, that maybe you guys see in your environment but wasn't in our data set. Um, so the scanner extensibility is just a JSON file, it's called issues.json. Um, and so uh, you define uh, something in this kind of schema with, uh, here you can see OS command injection is the one listed. Uh, and then all you have to do to add um, a new parameter alert is just add something at the bottom here. Here you can see under uh, download I've added sexy param. Um, so this will now alert in the hunt window. Methodology is very much the same, JSON file. Um, you can set the top level pieces of the methodology um, in this schema, um, this array, and uh, you can set uh, text about it, uh, you can set notes that automatically pop up with it, resources, bugs, you can load them automatically um, by filling out this JSON schema as well. So we'll go ahead and add something really quick. So I have the issues JSON file open um, for my loaded uh, hunt scanner. Um, at the top, the first one is insecure direct object reference, and I'm just going to add a custom parameter here. So uh, I'll add 
beefcake. All right, so I've added beefcake to uh, the list, and I will just save that. And now we will reload um, hunt scanner. So you do that through extender, uncheck scanner, recheck scanner. Cool. Now we'll go to our site. And we're proxied still. And here we will change this to Hopefully this works. So this obviously doesn't exist, uh, but it's still gonna trigger the scanner, hopefully. All right, uh, so let's go to scanner. I think that was an IDOR, right? Yeah, there's Beefcake, and there's our request and response. And now we could send this to either methodology or repeater to continue testing. So really easy to extend um, both the, uh, the uh, methodology and the uh, issues in this. There's also the checklist, and um, we included two methodologies with this. So if you go into the default one, it's checklist.json. And here you can see this is kind of the schema. I'm not gonna type up a whole new one, but uh, pretty easily just to copy and paste one of these blocks here. Uh, and create new methodology steps for your testers if, should it apply to your work if you do something different or uh, you don't like the methodologies that are included, so. Cool. Um, so stuff we wanna do that we haven't done yet. Um, so, uh, we want more methodology, so we included in this one, we included um, the application functionality map uh, that we test in, and then we also included the Web Application Hackers Handbook methodology in the back of the book. Um, so these are things that we want to kind of improve on. This is all on GitHub. We're looking for people to help with this stuff. Um, so PCI, HIPAA, CREST, OWASP, PTES all have uh, methodologies or reference each other for methodologies and are kind of modified. Um, so we would like to port these into that JSON schema so we can support uh, using methodology for those. Um, we like BERT, but a lot of people like ZAP, so we could probably port this to ZAP at some point in the future. Um, more scanner vulnerability checks and classes with data sets from not just us, uh, from other people. Um, more resources, uh, more testing resources for new people getting into application assessment, so cheat sheets, uh, guides on exploitation, good ones, um, internal methodologies for testing certain uh, vulnerability classes, et cetera. Um, dynamic JSON structure source. So we're now in the methodology, you can only have two nested methodology pieces, um, and you have to support the rest via notes and tabs. Um, it's just something that we haven't been able to get around right now, so we want to figure out that problem. Uh, the GUI is uh, not up to par. We would like to make that better. Right now it only supports um, uh, param equals value scanning, so we would like to support rest scanning at some point as well, um, so rest URL support. Um, and then there was, you notice when we did the right click, you only saw intruder and repeater. We'd like to include um, some of the other full burp helper, helpers, like uh, the rest of the right click menu that you get in targets, uh, searching and highlighting, et cetera, but those APIs are a little harder to bake into a custom tab window. Um, we'd like to be able to um, do some file name analysis instead of just parameters, but we don't have data on that yet. We can parse it soon. Um, so instead of parameters like uh, resource name or script name or something like that, uh, most vulnerable classes there, and then alert on content types, et cetera. So there's still a lot of work to be done here, um, but uh, but yeah, it's pretty good. And then um, responses on errors, so yeah. So that's, uh, that's the gist of the tool.